uh, unusual, but when you think about the question of where are the aliens, um, which I get asked a lot, um, this is like the Fermi paradox, where are the aliens? And um, I've not seen any evidence that there are aliens on Earth. A lot of people think there are aliens on Earth, and I'm like, great, I'd like to meet one. Um, you know, for a while there, when I was getting my green card and everything, it said alien registration card. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, this, this question of where are the aliens is, uh, I think, a very profound one. Because uh, we're, I'm aware of no evidence of aliens whatsoever. Which means that I think we're probably alone. Um, and <clears throat> if you look at the history of Earth, like how long has Earth been around? If, assuming that physics is correct, uh, the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Uh, Earth is about four and a half billion years old. When you f think about the, how, lo how old is civilization, I think the, the right measuring point for civilization, in my view, or, or a, a good measuring point, would be the advent of writing. So the first writing uh, is generally considered to be the ancient Sumerians. Uh, where are they now? They died out, but the, about 5,500 years ago, it was archaic pre-cuneiform. Pre in fact, I suggest um, it's like an interesting rabbit hole to uh, read about the history of writing. Um, so if you consider, say, like, okay, civilization, I think if you don't have writing, you kind of need writing for civilization. So. Um, so it's only been around for like a little over 5,000 years. Out of four and a half billion years that Earth has been around and the 13.8 billion years of the universe. So we're, all of human civilization is basically the blink of an eye. It's like a, just a fraction, it's almost, it's nothing. Um, and I think that that probably means that that consciousness is incredibly rare. Um, and perhaps fleeting. It may not last for very long. Because um, otherwise, we would I think we would have seen aliens, some kind of sign of aliens. I think the most likely explanation is that consciousness is, is uh, so rare that, that you, 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 it, and, and does that consciousness actually extend to another planet? Does that consciousness extend to uh, another star system. I mean, ultimately, if we're able to become a, a space-bearing civilization, a multi-planet species, and ultimately a, a multi-stellar species, and go out there and explore all these star systems, I think we may find that there are many long-dead one-planet civilizations. Um, we, and as you've heard me say before, we don't want to be one of those lame one-planet civilizations. I mean. We want to be a multi-planet civilization, ultimately be a multi-stellar civil civilization, be out there among the stars. Like, you know, make science fiction, not fiction forever. Um, kind of make Star, Star Trek real. Um, that's, uh, so that's why I think that there's, there's, there's a high urgency to making life multi-planetary. Um, because this is the first time in Earth's four and a half billion year history that it's been possible to extend life or consciousness beyond Earth. And we've got to do that while civilization is still strong. So that's, that's, that's the overarching goal of the company, is extend life sustainably to another planet. Mars is the only option, really. And uh, to do so, uh, Ideally, before World War III, or some kind of bad thing. The, the key thing is that we, we need enough people and enough tonnage on Mars, uh, such that Mars can survive and continue consciousness, uh, even if something were to happen to Earth. Um, now, I still think, well, obviously, we, 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 I'm not talking about ab abandoning Earth or anything like that. We want Earth to be as good as possible for as long as possible. But there are certain things that may be outside of our control. So, so we want to just get, get uh, Mars to be a self-sustaining civilization as quickly as possible. And I, I think this can be done in around 20 years. So 
And this, this you know, giant Starship factory that we're building is obviously key to that. And the launch sites that we're building here and at, and at the Cape and elsewhere in the future will be key to that. So, uh, it's wild that, that this, uh, this strange spot, this, we're, we're basically on a sand spit uh, by the Rio Grande near the beach. Um, and uh, that is actually the gateway to Mars. Um, has to be like, if, if this was a movie, you'd be like, no way. <laughs> Come on. Too, too implausible, but it's, it's real. And it's due to you guys. Congratulations. This is a side by side of the three flights. You can see our thruster weight improved significantly. So we've, um, we've made tremendous progress from flight one to flight two to flight three. And we got uh, flight four coming up in about a month or so. And uh, with flight four, we should, uh, if we get, you know, if fate smiles upon us, uh, we'll get through the high heating regime um, and uh, s smash into the ocean at a controlled spot. Um, and then uh, hopefully be able to also do this with the, with the booster, uh, land on a, essentially a virtual tower. Um, if, if the landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. Yeah. That, that, that's very much a success-oriented schedule, but, uh, but it is in the realm of possibility. Um, but I would say like the, the odds of us actually being able to catch the, the booster with the Mechazilla arms this year, I think, I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, knock on wood, but I think the odds of actually catching the booster uh, with the tower, probably like 80, 90% this year, um, which is insane. Like actually, when we first talked about it, it sounded so batshit crazy. <laughs> We're gonna have a giant, it's like literally bigger than Megazilla from this movie, <laughs> uh, that you would catch, like, the, like the, the biggest flying object ever made with mechanical arms out of the air. But we're going to do it. So, let's get, yeah. It may not work, you know, necessarily the first time, but, it, you know, it will work. Um, so really, a Starship is, is really the key to making life multiplanetary and preserving the light of, light of consciousness. That's what it's all about. And... Um, it, it may end up being the most important thing that, that we ever do. I think that you, you, like the light of consciousness is like this, this tiny candle in a, in a vast darkness. And th that candle has only been lit for a very short time and it could easily go out. So we obviously want to preserve that, that, the tiny light of consciousness on Earth, but extend it to Mars and then ultimately to the rest of the solar system and then start going to other, other star systems. And um, I mean, I won't be alive to see that, but unless I'm like frozen or something, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I, th I think at some point we will discover many civilizations that maybe lasted a million years or two million years or 10 million years. Um, but a civilization that lasted a million years, which, which would be, you know, vastly longer than our civilization has lasted. I mean, th that's only the, the third decimal point, so like 13.8 billion something something years. If, you're, if your civilization lasts a million years, it only goes, that third digit past the decimal point goes up one, <laughs> and that's a million years. So, I mean, I'd say, like, we should think of, like, how do we make civilization last a million years? You know, we often get caught up in, like, the day-to-day -day things, but we want to have at least a million-year civilization, if not a hundred million-year civilization, or a billion-year civilization. So, absolutely crucial to that goal is becoming a multi-planet species. People often, people often ask, why, why Mars? Um, 
Well, there's not a lot of options, frankly. <laughs> so, uh, Ibenis is a, a superheated, uh, high-pressure acid bath. So, not uh, not what you don't don't want to go to Venus. Uh, but, and then um, the Moon is close, but it, it it doesn't have an atmosphere. The gravity is only one sixth that of Earth, and it's missing a lot of key resources. So. Uh, also, the, 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 the insulating value of the moon rel it, relative to Mars is much less. So if there's something that takes out Earth, like let's say there's a World War III, a, a global thermonuclear warfare, they'll probably th th throw a few nukes at, at the moon. <laughs> so, whereas it's way harder to, to, to shoot Mars with, with nuclear. And we'd, Mars would see it coming and probably have some time to stop the inbound missiles. Um, so the, 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 ins the, the, the value of Mars, the, the, the difficult or the distance and time required to get to Mars actually has an insulating benefit to the for the continuation of consciousness, even if there's something terrible happens on Earth. Um, and uh, and then once we go beyond Mars, there's there's some asteroids like Ceres, uh, some of the moons of Jupiter. Um, Starship would ultimately be capable of. Uh, of reaching anywhere in the solar system. Uh, and then we'll need something, uh, uh, a new level of technology to go to other star systems. But if we can't at least get to Mars, then other star systems are hopeless. I mean, it's a fixer upper of a planet. Okay, it needs some work. But it is, uh, it's, it's really the only option for becoming multiplanetary. And long term, we can warm up Mars and we can. There, there would be, we can densify the atmosphere and there'd be a liquid ocean on about 40% of the surface. So be, we could make it an Earth-like planet uh, long term. So, let's see. Um, we've, we've, we've learned a tremendous amount from when we started the company and, and um, at first, could, we're unable to get even a small rocket to or orbit, to now where we've done three, 327 successful launches, uh, almost 300 landings. In fact, you know, give it a few weeks and we'll have done three, 300 landings. Um, 261 reflights. So, uh, I mean, many times I was told that uh, that reusability. Was it was impossible, and even if you did it, there would there would be no point because nobody would want to fly rockets that much. Um, but now we routinely uh, fly and, and land the booster, and we recover the fairing. So we've learned a tremendous amount from the Falcon program that is then feeding into the Starship program. Um, and Falcon and Starlink are what obviously keep keep the company going. So. Um, I'd just like to have, give a hand to the, the Falcon team for the incredible work that they're doing. And then Dragon. Wow, 45 launches of Dragon. It's amazing. And we've flown, flown 50 crew members to orbit. 46 to the space station, um, and uh, everyone has come home safely, which is the most important thing. Um, so, you know, incredible work by the Dragon team. So let's give them a hand. That was, uh, couldn't ask for a better outcome. <laughs>